This is a really tricky one. I find the dogs quite an uninteresting team at the best of times. So it's actually really quite difficult to do a review on them when I just find them kind of boring, which isn't a bad thing against the dogs. They're just never in the media. They're never in the news. So it's kind of hard to draw conclusions on them outside of just statistical analysis. So that probably coupled with the fact that no one really follows the dogs. I'm not expecting this review to poll very well on the views. <laughs> So the dogs in 2019 were a really interesting week to week team, really, across the entire year. They didn't really have any good consistency at any stage of the year. They'd have periods where they were going all right. They'd have periods where they were not going all right. They never had any consistent run of either being good or bad. So it's quite difficult to draw conclusions on a team that by round 12 was sitting in 15th position on 88%. Um, in fact, that didn't really improve two, three rounds later. So they really made a, a, a tremendous late charge uh, at the end of the year to finish in seventh spot with a percentage of over 100%. It's actually quite remarkable that they were actually able to turn that around in the space of 10 to 11 games, which is half their season. So commendable to them to finish the year off like that. But even then, the back half of the year, I wouldn't say was consistently good. I would just say it was better than the teams around them who were really consistently bad. So 2018 was not a good year for the Bulldogs. They did manage to finish 13th, but in a year where the bad teams were fairly bad, they only actually managed eight wins, 14 losses, and a paltry percentage of 77%. That's way, way down on a team that won a premiership only two years earlier. So there were some actual genuine concerns for the Dogs coming into 2019 because their drop-off from 2016 had just been so fast and so steep and it was kind of difficult to see where it was going to stop. Now, you could have made a valid argument with regards to improvement. You know, younger players, the Dogs have always been a young team. So you could have made the argument that that young core team was getting more experience and would actually go on to improve into a more consistent uh, high output. However, in saying that, you could also have made the argument that they would just stagnate and not improve because of how young the list was and how many more young talent was actually coming through the door as opposed to getting older, more mature players surrounding that young talent. So it was actually really hard to make predictions on the Bulldogs coming into 2019 to the point where pretty much no one could really agree where the dogs would end up and this is what I mean when I say that the dogs are quite an uninteresting club because they don't have much of a focal point on them which also means that they probably have the least amount of spotlight on them in the entire competition. My expectations personally for the dogs coming into 2019 was that they would be around about the eighth mark. Um, I wasn't sure that they would actually make finals in fact i think i predicted that they wouldn't um not that i made my predictions known in the preseason because we've never actually finished <laughs> a, a preview or review series until probably this one that we're doing um but I, I i thought that that would be maybe at the lowest tenth sort of thing and by the midway of the year it was just looking likely that they may not have even made that so by any stretch of the means the dogs actually opened up the year and opened up their season on a pretty positive note they managed to beat sydney in melbourne to the tune of 17 points and no one kind of knew where sydney was going to lie this year so it was a pretty good win pretty good launching pad for the year for the dogs and they were able to follow it up with a 19 point win against the hawks as well so their opening two games were two good wins uh they beat 
finalists from the previous year, which was only a good indicator for the team moving forward. Now, obviously, we know what happened with the Swans and to a lesser extent, Hawthorne across the span of the year. But to open up the year, it was a really good start for the Dogs and a really positive momentum mover for them heading into the rest of the season. Unfortunately, a really close loss to the Suns kind of broke that momentum up, especially as that game was played in Melbourne. So by the end of four rounds, the Dogs are just outside the eight. They've got a percentage of 105%. They've won two, lost two. It's not all doom and gloom. It's not all positive. There is still a platform to be launched. And then round five happened. Round five is kind of disheartening for the dogs because they came up against Carlton, who at the start of 2019 was actually really positive without really notching up any wins. Carlton was able to manage to score its first 100 point game in over three years. To make matters worse, this would be the biggest loss in the dog season so far, to the tune of 44 points, which really hurt their percentage and kind of dropped them back down the ladder a fair bit. So three losses in a row, they traveled to Fremantle. And for about three quarters of that game, it was a really close competitive game. In fact, the dogs had the lead halfway through the third term and was only about a goal down at three quarter time. So the last quarter was theirs for the taking. However, this is kind of the part of the year that the Dockers were traveling pretty well and they kind of took the fourth quarter away from the dog. The opening of 2019 was looking like it was going to be another 2018. And this is around about the time that the rumblings of the three consecutive year without any finals, despite winning a premiership, was starting to bubble under the surface. And every week that the dogs were not looking likely to make finals, this conversation was brought up in the media. If ever you wanted a moment to sort of witness what the Bulldogs could do in 2019, round seven was the game that you wanted to watch. The two teams had a real battle all the way up until half time with Richmond somewhat controlling the first term or at least leading at the first quarter break and the Dogs having a bit more control in the second term but without actually dominating per se, at least not on the scoreboard. And then came the second half where the Dogs would go on to score six goals compared to the Tigers three. It really actually put the scoreboard pressure on Richmond too far for Richmond to chase it back. When you put that on the back of round eight, where they come up against the Lions, who at the end of the year finished in second spot, the Dogs kind of took this game away from the Lions as well after Brisbane had actually already launched their season. They were getting it going. They were still finding some consistency errors, but Brisbane were actually playing pretty decent footy at this time, really exciting and fast footy, and the Dogs were able to counter it and capitalize on the turnovers of the Lions. I suppose this was just a glimpse as to what, again, the Bulldogs were capable of at their best and when they focused on what the task at hand was. So a big loss to the Cats is followed up by a relatively decent loss to the Kangaroos the following week. They would actually go on to lose by 25 points. So all of that percentage that they had regained from their two previous wins had now been abolished. In fact, the following week against West Coast, that percentage had been completely decimated. West Coast, up until half time, had only managed to kick 45 points, which is a respectable score at half time for any team. In the third quarter alone, they kicked 56 points, more than doubling their half time score in one quarter. In fact, they would push the lead further out in the last quarter as well and the dogs would end up going down by 61 points. They would end up with a percentage of 88%, which is really hard to come back from after 11 rounds. In fact, round 12 was their buy. So when they came back for round 13, they started the round in 15th position with a percentage of 88% and only 10 games to be able to salvage their year. I'll let you in on a little secret, okay? In the year 2019, 
from about 7th position all the way down to about 14th. No one wanted to play finals. I know, right? Mind blown. So then, what happens after the bye? Well, the dogs come up against Carlton, they get their revenge, and they beat Carlton by three points. The dogs would stumble after this win, going down to the pies, uh, but it was only a small margin. But they would go on to win their next three. And then you have the game from hell, from the opponent's perspective. Because from the Bulldogs perspective, this is one of the best games of the year. This is one of the most dominant displays of football you will see over the last two to three decades. Probably the only one coming close to it is Geelong's demolition of Melbourne in the year that they scored like 250 odd points or whatever it was. The Bombers would open up the scoring ledger within the first opening minutes of the game. It would be the last goal that they scored for 108 minutes. In that time span, the Western Bulldogs have kicked 21 unanswered goals. So, needless to say, this was the percentage booster that the dogs were desperately, desperately after. What's that? You, you want some context, do you? Okay, context. The percentage of the dogs coming into the Essendon game was 95.8%. After the Essendon game, their percentage jumps up to 102.2%. The dogs then go on to smash GWS at GWS's home ground to the tune of 61 points, further boosting up their percentage. They finish their year by beating Adelaide and establishing their spot as seventh placed finishers at the end of the home and away season. If they had lost to Adelaide, then they may have dropped out. So they really needed to win. They didn't really need to win big or anything. Their spot was solidified as long as they did win. Unfortunately though, GWS were ready for a finals type game and the Bulldogs weren't. GWS would absolutely go on to smash them in week one of the finals and end the Bulldogs year for 2019. So like I said at the top of the video, it's actually really hard to draw any conclusions on a team that's fairly inconsistent throughout the year. You, it's hard to tell whether they're going good, whether they're going bad. They do have a lot of positives though. Aaron Norton looks to be a forward for the future. Marcus Bontempelli had another outstanding year. I personally never had him in Brownlow conversations, but a lot of other people who probably followed the dogs more closely than I definitely had him in the Brownlow discussions. Jack McRae had another outstanding year, although a bit of a slow start to the year, much like the dogs themselves, uh, but he put in another other outstanding year and has kind of just established himself as one of the premier midfielders of the competition over the last two to three years. And emerging star Dunkley had a really, really good year in particular towards the back end of the year this year as well, as he kind of establishes himself as a star for the future for the dogs, which is what they're going to need if they continue to play this contested style footy, particularly in the middle moving forward. I'm an undecided man on Luke Beveridge. I understand that he got the team to a premiership in 2016, which is absolutely wonderful. It broke their drought, which is something that clubs are always happy to do. But his quest for versatility in every one of his players in every position on the ground is perplexing to me. I personally find that you can have a few players versatile that can plug up holes throughout the ground and just be key playmakers wherever you need them to be. But I feel like position specialists are required on the ground and I just feel like Beveridge is only trying to have maybe three position specialists on the ground and the rest of the team being made up of versatile options, which I don't think is going to make a 
premiership style team. It worked in 2016 to a degree because of how chaotic the dogs were, but that chaos induced style of footy can only work to a certain extent so how do I rate the dogs this year? It's quite tricky. Like I said, expectations on them before the start of the year were very varied. Um, however, based on my expectations where I had them just missing finals, they managed to finish seventh position. I'm gonna rate the dogs as a B minus. Bit better than average, a bit better than their expectations, but not wholeheartedly better than what I expected of them. Um, so that's why they get the minus tag on there. Do you agree with my review? And if so, or if not, let me know down in the comments below. I'd love to hear your thoughts on how the dogs went this year. Was I too harsh on them? Was I not harsh enough? I'm very interested to hear your feedback. And if you don't want to be doing it down in the comments below, then you can always join our Discord. The link will be in the description just below. Make sure if you haven't done so already, if you did like the video, to leave a thumbs up. Make sure you subscribe and ring the bell to receive notifications when we come out with the last few of the teams for the reviews series. We've only got six teams to go. The grand final is this weekend. We're gonna be having those out over the next two weeks. Thank you very much for watching everyone and I will see you when I'm on screen next. Bye.